7.4 Classifying Systems of Linear Equations When it comes to linear equations, we basically have three types of systems we need to worry about. The first one is consistent independent. In this system, we've got two lines that cross. In the next system, we've got an inconsistent system. In an inconsistent system, we've got two parallel lines. They will never touch. The last type is a consistent dependent system. In a consistent dependent system, you've got two lines right over top of each other. They're practically the same line. So when we look at these systems, when you're classifying, we're going to be looking at two main elements, the slope and the y-intercept. Let's start with the slope. In the consistent independent system, both those lines are at different angles, so they have different slopes. The slope of the first line does not equal the slope of the second line. But on parallel lines, both slopes are the same. On a consistent dependent system, because they're practically the same line, they do have the exact same slope. So if we're looking at two linear equations, the first step is to look at the slope. If the slopes are different, you've got a consistent independent system. If it's the same, then you've either got an inconsistent or a consistent dependent system. Now we're going to have to start looking at our y-intercepts. In the inconsistent system, we've got two different y-intercepts. They're not the same. So the y-intercept from the first line is not the same as the y-intercept from the second line. When we look at a consistent dependent system, both lines cross the y-axis at the exact same point. So our y-intercepts are going to be the same. So when it comes to classifying these two systems, compare your slopes first. If the two slopes are different, you've got a consistent independent system. If your slopes are the same, then you're going to need to look at your y-intercepts. And when you compare your y-intercepts, if your intercepts are different, then you've got an inconsistent system. If your y-intercepts are the same, then you've got a consistent dependent system. So the main reason we're classifying these systems is so that we know how many solutions each system is going to have. Essentially, how many places do the two lines touch? When I look at the consistent independent system, we've got one solution. Those two lines only touch in one place. In the inconsistent system, those are parallel lines they never touch each other. There are no solutions in an inconsistent system. And when we look at the consistent dependent system, there's a solution right there, and 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 all the places in between too. Because those two lines are laid over top of each other, there's an infinite number of solutions for that system. And that's the key to what most of these questions are gonna ask. They wanna know, how many solutions are there in your system? You can predict how many solutions there's going to be. So a quick little blurb about the naming of these systems. If it's got the term consistent in it, it means there's going to be at least one solution. Someplace, those two lines will touch. And the inconsistent system, those two lines never touch. There's no solution. And independent, I've got two separate lines. Whereas dependent, I've essentially got the same line twice. On our first example here, I'm given two equations. And the question asks, what type of system is shown and how many solutions does it have? Now they're both linear equations, but I wanna know what type of system it's going to be. And in order to do that, we need to know their slope and their y-intercept. And the best way to do that is convert it into y equals mx plus b form. Okay, let's number our equations. I'm gonna make the first one equation number one, and the second one's going to be equation number two. Let's start with number one. We're going to do some algebra to isolate the y, subtract x from both sides, 5y. I'm going to move the x into the front, but the negative stays on it. Negative x plus 9. Next step, divide both sides by 5. Those two 5s cancel each other out. And let me rewrite this equation. I just pulled the whole fraction out in front of the x so the slope is easy to find. So from this, we need our slope and we need our y intercept. Our slope of line 1 is negative one fifth. Our y-intercept of line one is nine over five. Okay, that in itself isn't terribly useful until we do the same thing on our second equation. Let's convert it to y equals mx plus b4. I've got it in y equals mx plus b4. My slope of line two equals three halves, and my y-intercept for line two equals minus six. Now I've got enough information to compare them. Start with your slopes. My slope on my first line is negative one-fifth. Slope on my second line 
is three halves. That's as far as I need to go. Those slopes are different. And as soon as we have two different slopes, we have two lines that are going to cross. We've got a consistent independent system. Slope of line one does not equal line two. Therefore, we have a consistent independent system. And from what we know about consistent independent systems, they all have one solution. Let's go through one more example. Here I've got two more linear equations. The question asks the same thing. What type of system is shown and how many solutions does it have? Let's number those equations. We're going to convert everything into y equals mx plus b form and then compare the slopes and the y-intercepts. Let's go through it. For equation one, after I simplify the fractions, my slope ends up being three quarters. My y-intercept, also after simplifying fractions, ends up being negative three halves. Let's do the second equation. After simplifying all the fractions and doing all the algebra, the slope of my second line ends up being three quarters. The y-intercept of my second line ends up being negative three over two. Now it's time to compare the two slopes and compare the two y-intercepts. Starting with the slopes, the slope of the first line is exactly the same as the slope of the second line. That means it cannot be a consistent independent system because the slopes are the same. Let's move on to the y-intercepts. Well, my y-intercepts are also the same. If my two slopes are the same and my two y-intercepts are the same, I've got two lines that go at the same angle cross the y-axis at the exact same spot. I've got a line on top of a line. I've got a consistent dependent system. And a consistent dependent system has infinite solutions. Those two lines touch the entire length of them. And that is classifying linear systems.